top period hacks to survive your period a little bit better. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. And today I'm talking about your period and some top tips or things you may not have thought about for how you can manage your period. Now for me personally, having periods, natural periods, when I was trying to conceive was like insult to injury. One, I didn't want to have a period because I wanted to be pregnant. Two, I had been on birth control for many years. And I had very light and tolerable periods. And so when I came off of it and I suddenly started having real periods again, I was not pleased by how I felt and how it impacted my life. So want to take the time today to help break down what you may want to know and just some of those tips and tricks to survive the menstrual phase a little bit better. I'm going to review the basics of the menstrual cycle and then what I want you to know about this phase and period hacks quickly. So a very quick top tip video. As always, this channel exists to teach you about your body and your fertility. And so I would love it if you would subscribe. We are getting close to a big milestone in subscribers and I am so excited. And I just love every one of you here who is supporting my message of education as empowerment. So please hit that subscribe button for me. In order to understand your period, let's just think through your hormones a lot because a lot of the symptoms we have are actually hormonally derived. When we think of the menstrual cycle, you really have four different phases. You have your period or menses. You then have the follicular phase when you're growing a follicle or an egg. You have ovulation, the time period when you ovulate. And you have the luteal phase when that follicle turns into a corpus luteum and makes progesterone. This cycle should happen really nicely and succinctly. So what happens is you have a group of eggs that comes out of the vault inside the ovary. Each egg grows inside a follicle. The brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone while you're on your period, while you're in your menstrual phase. And FSH works to get a follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it starts making estrogen. You stop bleeding because estrogen, it's the endometrium or the lining of the uterus to grow. You get higher estrogen levels as that egg becomes more mature. And that is the follicular phase. That time is when you have like high energy after your period, before you ovulate, the body loves estrogen. High energy, a lot of sharp focus. Then when that estrogen level is high enough, 200 picograms for 50 hours, that tells the brain that you have a mature egg and it sends out a signal of LH or luteinizing hormone in a nice big surge to tell the follicle to rupture and allow the egg to release. So it's actually a cyst that bursts. And so some people feel that pain and that's called middle schmerz, which is pain in the middle of the cycle. After ovulation, that cyst reforms and becomes the corpus luteum, and that corpus luteum then is a cyst that makes progesterone stimulated by LH pulses throughout the entire luteal phase. The corpus luteum only lives for about 12 to 14 days, and so if you are not pregnant, it dies, progesterone drops, and you get your period, and the process starts over again. If you get pregnant, then HCG from the pregnancy actually maintains that corpus luteum until the pregnancy grows and, and develops. So the important thing here is that one, your period's a vital sign. So if you are not getting regular and predictable periods, you should see a doctor and get an evaluation to try to figure out why. If your doctor dismisses you, go see another one. You deserve to understand why your period is not regular and predictable. By predictable, I mean it should happen within a few days of expected every single month. You should be able to point to a day on the calendar with relative precision for when that period is going to come. And if you cannot, that's a warning sign. All right, when you have your period though, so we're talking about period hacks today, this is actually a time frame in your cycle where both your estrogen and your progesterone are low. So you have different values at all these phases. In the menstrual phase, estrogen and progesterone low. Follicular, high estrogen, no progesterone. Ovulation, peak estrogen, no progesterone. And then luteal, high estrogen and progesterone. So these phases all have different hormonal profiles and that's why you feel differently. So this is a hormone low time and your body does not like it. Those hormones are actually lowest right before and as you're starting your period. So if you have really predictable periods, you can know when this is coming and you can make some adjustments to your life. And this is sometimes called cycle syncing, where you kind of make adjustments based on what is coming. Okay, so let's just think of some things you can do. The top is going to be to still exercise while you're on your period, but to modify it. Understanding your hormonally low estrogen gives you energy. That's not going to be your peak time. So don't have your longest run for your marathon training then. Try to have this time be where you think about yoga, 
walking outside, light jogging, something that's going to get your blood flowing. Those endorphins can be really helpful for your mood because you don't have the estrogen, but you're not going to have the energy to sustain your full out. So instead of trying something and getting very frustrated, maybe lean in on either resistance training with weights, yoga, walking, jogging, something that can get your blood moving and still help your body and give you some endorphins without straining you too much. It's perfectly fine to take some painkillers throughout your period. It, the cramps are caused by high prostaglandins. That's inflammation inside the uterus as it's actually cramping to let that menstrual product out or the endometrium out. And so NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin, Aleve, Motrin, those are usually most effective at period cramping. And so you can take those a day before your period comes if you know it's coming. Take it before you go work out so that you know it's not going to hurt you more. And don't be afraid to use those medications. Please remember, they can cause uh, gastric upset. So make sure you're eating with them. And when it comes to eating, staying away from things that are going to make you increase in bloating is going to be helpful. So even though sometimes you might crave certain things, if you eat really salty foods during this time period, it's actually going to make some of the bloating a little bit worse and you might feel worse. So some of the things that I love to recommend people eat when they're on their period are things that have like healthy fats in them and that are not that salty. So things like almonds, pistachios, oranges, bananas, cherries, dark chocolate. So really think about making sure you have some of those foods on hand if you know when your period is coming so you can stay away from salt or things that will make you increase in bloating. Caffeine is another one. I know you're going to have less energy because you have less estrogen, but drinking an increase in caffeine to compensate is actually going to have you retain water more and make you feel more uncomfortable. You already are maybe not fitting into your clothes the way you want during this phase, so don't make it worse. Instead, get an extra hour of sleep. Sleep is so important in the process of cellular repair and letting your body heal. So making sure that you give your body time to sleep. So come home earlier if your friends are going out. Try to not maybe work out in the morning, work out in the afternoon. Modify your routine to suit what your body is going through. And so avoiding things that can make you bloated and then also getting more sleep, those two things are very huge. Also remember that your body is bleeding and we don't want you to become anemic. And so having vitamins that have iron in them can be really helpful, but you can also get iron from lots of natural sources. And even though red meat is one source of iron, one of the best is actually your leafy greens. So kale and spinach. So if you meal prep, maybe plan um, a meal where you have spinach with blueberries and almonds and eat a salad for lunch. That's going to really nourish your body, help give you the iron and some of the antioxidants you need without making you feel an increase in bloating. Magnesium can also help with cramping. You can take a magnesium supplement. You can also find magnesium in dark chocolate. You can also find it in those leafy greens and some of those nuts. So that's another way in those first couple days when the cramps are really bad is you can take magnesium or lean on some magnesium rich foods to help have a natural way to alleviate some of those cramps and then make your life easier. So stash period products in places that you are, your car, your desk at work and your house, not having a pad or tampon when you need one can be terrible. Make sure you have the right absorbencies for you. Think about period panties at night so you don't have any overflow into your sheets. Having to change your sheets is just added insult. So I love period panties at night, having pads and tampons that work for you. Make sure you change your tampons every four hours so you don't get toxic shock syndrome. Use the lowest absorbency that you need, but that might be super at the first few days of your cycle. But so make sure you have those on stock and in different places. Using a heating pad can be totally fine and can be helpful with cramps. So whether that is a pad or something you warm up in the microwave, a water bottle, or an actual heating pad that you plug in, something that you can actually put on your uterus to help those cramps. Heat is a great natural remedy. And then the last one is you can lean on tea. I love tea and tea has been something that has really helped me at various times. So you want to stay away from the tea that has caffeine as we already talked about caffeine to stay away from green or black, but lemon tea, mint tea. I love peppermint tea, ginger tea. Those can be some great ones that can both help you feel better and also can provide you some relief. So I know I don't personally love ginger, but ginger can be really good in these circumstances because it can decrease inflammation. But you'll find me with a cup of peppermint tea most evenings. It's one of my favorite things. So I hope these period hacks were a little bit helpful just thinking about how you can modify your life. 
knowing that your period is coming in order to get through it in the best way. The period is a natural thing that happens to your body. So try to view it as that instead of just the enemy. But I know when you're trying to get pregnant, sometimes it does feel like the enemy. Overall, I appreciate you guys being here. Feel free to ask any questions and please subscribe to the channel if you have not. You can always get more information on the As Woman podcast and you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks friends.